This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, and welcome back to yet another edition of Edmonton Oilers discussion here on the channel. And let me tell you, video number three does not pertain to the Oilers' season opener tomorrow against the Vancouver Canucks. I mean, how is that possible? How do we possibly have news unrelated to tomorrow against the Canucks at 8 p.m.? That seems absolutely mystifying to me that that's a possibility this late in the game. But wait, we finished that World Juniors with one huge question mark. And I mean, I, I, I really went out there on a limb and kind of clickbaited the title, I'll be honest with you, talking about huge concerns with Philip Broberg. Well, ladies and gentlemen, those huge concerns, they were valid. As we'll get to this tweet from Bob Stoffer right now, looking at Ken Holland confirms an Oilers now that Philip Broberg played with a slight tear above the knee and had a partial shoulder separation, say that one three times fast, in the middle round of the World Junior Championship. That is insane, all right? Because for Philip Broberg, a guy that was counted on for Team Sweden, right? He was the captain. He was the guy that was supposed to be the be-all, end-all of that team, leader offensively, like he was early in that uh that first game of the tournament, but we knew he had some kind of injury in practice, which would more than likely be the slight tear above the knee, and it just avalanched and got worse from there. So the slight tear above the knee was what nagged him all throughout the preliminary round, and then all of a sudden into the middle round, a separated shoulder probably suffered in the last game of the preliminary round. And then mind you, he only played like, what, three out of four of the games because he sat one out against Austria, if my memory serves correct. So Philip Broberg was broken on the ice for Team Sweden. And I mean, am I sitting here broken leg, broken arm? No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. But for your captain to be this banged up trying to lead a team to the promised land, yeah, that's going to be tough. And that is a big reason why. And anyone out there that's like, oh man, Philip Broberg had a terrible showing. Oh, what a joke of a showing for Philip Broberg. And I'm not talking Oilers fans here. I'm talking people around the NHL. I'm sorry. If you uh, if you want to stand corrected, right now is the time. Because I told you, straight up, there was something to be noted about Philip Broberg. He wasn't right. He was pretty off. And whether it be a severe or minor injury, it was affecting his game pretty majorly. I'm sorry. I don't think I could do my job, let alone skate in a World Juniors on a tear above my knee. And then at the best of days, my shoulders hurt. I could not imagine if I had a partially separated shoulder, okay? So for Philip Broberg, that's pretty insane to be playing on. And the fact that he got the job done and played at all. I'm not talking played well or played big minutes. Just the fact that he played is insanity to me. And I mean, that shows one thing we did not talk about in that huge concerns for Philip Broberg video is the fact that that's character, that is leadership, that is determination, that is a will to win, that is drive, that is whatever you want to say about characteristics that say this is a good team player. I, I don't know what else you could sit here and boil it down to for Philip Broberg. That is absolutely crazy to me to sit here and look at this two things of injuries and the fact that, you know what, Steady Eddie, he was still moving the puck fairly well. You think about that dive and play, leaping for a goal that was denied right in front of the crease. That was a great play. There are Actually, that's probably where he separated his shoulder, to be quite honest. But... Right, there's a lot going on there for Philip Broberg that was still bright spots. That three assist game, that was massive. But man, you're kidding me that now all of a sudden you've got Broberg who's back in Sweden. He's got to heal this up and then finish off the SHL season and get back over to North America to finish off the NHL season. So Philip Broberg, a guy that could potentially be playing all the way from October or September whenever they got things underway. I'm not exactly 100% remembering that, but whenever Shaleftia got things underway, to July, if the Oilers are in the Stanley Cup final, right? That is a long, well, that is 10 months straight of hockey. Yes, some time off with injury, sure, but that's 10 months of hockey. In three, four different situations, Shaleftia, 
Edmonton bubble, Sheleftia, wherever the bubble is for the playoffs next time, who knows what things are going to look like in July, all right? We had no clue what July last year was going to look like this time in January. So straight up, it is what it is. But ladies and gentlemen, I, I sit here and I, I still can't fully process it. We knew something was severely wrong with Broberg, right? And I mean, partial shoulder separation, that's not like a separated shoulder, quote-unquote, but that's still a significant injury right there. You saw me readjust in the chair. That hurt my shoulder, okay? It's been a hard grinding day throwing in about 2,800 pounds of sheet metal into houses today, and here I am sitting sore after that. You imagine these guys taking hits that are just as violent as some car crashes, and then you've got, well, a shoulder separation of some sort on top of it. Oh, and by the way, you've got a tear above your knee. My goodness, that is absolutely insane. So right now, I guess to wrap this video up in the next few minutes here is to look at it from this perspective. For us as Oilers fans, the best thing, the biggest thing we need right now is proper rehab for Philip Broberg. Get him back into Sheleftia colors. Get him solidly producing points again at the SHL level and then get him over to North America when the season for Sheleftia is done and dusted. So there's a little bit of a process there that starts off with the best and quickest but also most comprehensive kind of rehab and injury time off that you can get for Philip Broberg. And then the big key is inserting him back into those big minutes with Sheleftia, allowing him to succeed in a big role overseas, develop the game further by playing more minutes on the ice, and then bring him back over here when it is said time to do so. For the Oilers, it's not that complicated, but the stuff that has to go on in Sweden is very pivotal to what happens next for Philip Broberg. But at the end of all of this, ranting about this injury stuff is to say that the nicest part about it for us as Oilers fans is the fact that Philip Broberg does not have some career threatening injury like Oscar Clefbaum. Yes, shoulder injury sure, but this is not something to the degree that we're going to see sideline Oscar Clefbaum for the rest of the year. So that is a very, very welcome sign when all things are considered at the end of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tyson, the Stolony TV. I want to cover the Anton Forsberg waivers thing, but you know what? I also want to go watch some television tonight and sit back and relax before I spend a crazy evening with all of you on Dolony TV here tomorrow night covering the Vancouver Canucks versus Edmonton Oilers. So enjoy your evening. We've talked enough about Forsberg. We've talked enough about Stuart Skinner. I'm going to take the rest of the night off unless there's any breaking news. Ladies and gentlemen, I am up on Oda here.